Something along the lines of, where in the hell are you? Shit's going down. We need to leave town stat. I want my money back. <laughs> Something like that. Bitch. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'll head right towards you. It'd be nice if you told me where you are! <laughs> <laughs> you can't reply to this message. <laughs> Do you have any more? No! I don't. <laughs> <laughs> You're such a dick, you could have said where you were. I know! <laughs> yeah, that sounds right. That sounds right. Yeah, that sounds right. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. <laughs> I think the question was, where are you? Yeah, yeah no. that was you the said, question. Yeah. <sighs> yep, that's one. Yeah, Sai is one. One word. <laughs> Feels like five. <laughs> Less Sai. <laughs> Pause what? another five. <laughs> teeth, teeth. You know. Is that is that you know or you know? You know. I'm just gonna assume we're headed towards the seminary here. So that's where we'll meet you. Repeated yourself. Werther's original. Okay. 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 I'm gonna I'm gonna murder them. <laughs> Fourth level. Okay. What are we doing with this person? We're just leaving them. Want to put him in my, my chest cavity? I kind of do, yeah. I mean, we'd have to chop him up into little pieces. You start at the joints and take care of the tendons first, and then they just fall right up. Touch your nose. Oh, okay, he's not going to listen to us. Okay. Okay. Thomas, do some jumping jacks. Maybe it's like Simon says, you gotta, you gotta say Rin says. Yeah, Rin says. Rin says, do some jumping jacks. Make a persuasion check. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? <laughs> what is it? You all should have let Lana die. <laughs> <laughs> One roll, and she's right in. <laughs> nah. Lana could pate? Stay behind and keep an eye? He could. I'm not sure if he's up for that level of responsibility, but you know, I have full faith in him. Maybe this is his opportunity to, like, grow and rise in his station. Oh! Oh, uh, it's been a little bit. Very big assignment for you. I need to hear if you feel like you can handle this level of responsibility. All right? I can guarantee you. I can well, handle it. You don't it. know yet. You don't well, know. Well, I haven't told me. you. <laughs> um, do you see this man over here? Yeah. That's Taldus. Do you think you could like babysit him? Do you have to let me know? You just, you basically, you just have to be my eyes. Can you have to stay here. Yeah. Can you do this? You're in your head? Yeah, I think so. I'm so proud of you. You're maturing <laughs> so well. Thanks, oh you know, goodness. coming up in the world. Go find some place to hide. Great, <laughs> right, we got hog time. Ankles, wrists, pull back. I put it about, <laughs> I'd say 25 feet away. <laughs> he ties up people in boats. <laughs> Just reminding you all, I'm not having a great day today. Is there anything that we've done that has helped you in that situation? Yeah, Let's be bad. kind to each other. Any kind of conflict might set it off. Physical conflicts definitely sets it off. Any emotional conflicts. So maybe just don't you even mm. fucking joke right now. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry, see, look, I can't even control. I can't even control. I can't control. <laughs> I'm a yeah. cursor now. No, I curse. I'm a swimmer. You know what? I gotta put a coin in, in the coin jar. <laughs> okay. okay. Just be nice to each other. Yeah, Overly nice. All right. Over Are you okay? <laughs> Great. Mm. All right, let's go. Should we? Did Pate close the whole door by themselves? That was me showing you, closing the door behind you. Oh, okay, right? okay. <laughs> that was Pate having unrealistic he, strength. I mean, he's so buff. <laughs> Trudging to you, slowly, unhappily, a young man with dark brown hair, some bad skin, in chef's whites, in a chef's hat, covered in tomato sauce, some sort of sticky apple pastry filling, just filthy from food refuse. Fuck happened to all you? Sorry, are we acquainted? Oh, shit, hold on. Glamour drops. I'm just filthy in chef's whites. <laughs> it takes a moment. A couple times. Uh, Is that food? It's very expensive marinara sauce. Apple tarts, vinaigrette. Did you get a job? <laughs> Kinda. I've also clearly been in a fight. Whoa. Yeah, but did you make a porn? What? We should go in. Yeah, let's so find some place. <laughs> wow. Just take the air out of the hole wow. right there. Okay. I thought three hours, two hours, you'd be fine. A lot of tension between you guys right now. Oh, Just try to keep it light, please. <laughs> You're right. If you need help with anything, we're here for you. Thank you. It's been a day. It's we're so happy to see you again, Ashton. Oh, it's such a relief. I go up, I hug his knee very, Ow. very, 
that's okay. This is better. No, that's thank you. It is good. It is actually. It, I'm. It's nice to see you too. Oh. There was a robbing of an office. There was a mob. It may you have been. In the kitchen. Well, technically. What the fuck? While we were walking up the stairs, I recognized a face. A person I used to work with. Their name is Violet. They're bad news. They do a lot of things. They're smart, polite. They're very good at convincing people. To, didn't have enough time to explain to you what the fuck was going on to make sure we weren't being followed by very bad people with bank rolls. I interrogated them at, at first. They're so smart, and you start talking, and then suddenly you're answering questions, and you didn't mean to be, and so I accidentally told them, like, a lot. Turns out they weren't here for us. They knew enough they could have turned us in for money. I agreed to just do a quick 60-minute tag-along just to clear that up. You gonna freelanced get that. on the side? They were gonna sell our It's fine. It's fine. Now, it's fine. It's so great. He was just helping out. It's fine. The sentries may have been involved. Cops! All there right. were cops. There was some fighting. I may have helped kidnap the mobster. Was the job <laughs> successful? Oh, yeah. The job was successful. Oh, Turns out Violet was in town to get some information out of one of the local mobs. Well, they were trying to steal some ledgers to prove apparently some sort of fishy business between them and some artifact theft. I went in, Violet gave me a glamour, went in through the kitchen, so the shit got weird, got caught, had to tie up a couple mobsters while we ransacked the main guy's office. Or Grio. We may have tied him up. At least last I checked, I think he's been arrested. Turns out he doesn't keep a ledger, he has a Kenku. So we kidnapped the Kenku. This is the best story ever. Uh, <laughs> And we tied up the Kenku. We wrapped it in like a very expensive rug that was clearly stolen and antique. Worth more money than I've ever made in my life. Did you keep the rug? Same, <laughs> same page. Questions. Yes. Or the Kenku. Did you keep either? Well, okay, yes. Until, of course, everything went wrong. It's a very big house and there was a lot of turns and a lot of rooms. I don't know why I had so many rooms. Not a lot of people lived there. And the next thing I know, we were unconscious, tied up in the kitchen. And there was some interrogation on their end, not ours. They got the Kenku back and they were starting to ask me about who I was and what was happening. And what was going on, and there was some punching, which I'm fine with. And then the feds raided. The feds? <laughs> What's a fed? The sentries. Everyone got upset when I said sentries. sentries. So a bunch of people showed up with authority. Oh no. Busted the place out. I got out just long enough to actually throw enough fists. Don't fight in kitchens. Oh. <laughs> Wait, but you didn't give them any information when they were interrogated? Didn't get that far, thankfully, and the Kenku and the boss are arrested and... They arrested the Kenku? He was a bad, bad Kenku. Some Kenkus aren't nice. All Kenkus aren't nice. No, and there's some really nice Kenkus out there. That story was like a Rube Goldberg They don't know who device. the fuck I am. I don't know if the story's over yet, or <laughs> It's hard to argue with Violet. We used to do some stuff back in the day. She worked with Hexum a few times, also even before, like the... You have so many people. I do. Lots of money? I might actually have some dough. Oh, snap! Let's Wait. see the oh, coin, actual, baby! It's no, it's the... Oh. Oh, because of the baking situation. Oh. Sourdough? Pull out some fresh pastries. Oh. I got breakfast. I didn't know what else to do. That's wonderful. That's, oh my god. Uh, that's baby. such a busy baby. morning. That, you know? It's a lot. I'm so tired. Mm. Ashton's covered in food. I'm gonna no, change. not anymore. No, I'm, I'm only my dignity is covered in food. I'm gonna be right back. I'm gonna change when I walk into the <laughs> hole. No, don't leave. No, he's gonna be gone again forever. I can hear you. I'm in a hole. Okay. No, actually, you can't hear us when you're in the hole. <laughs> I can't hear you. I'm in a hole. <laughs> I had a fresh calzone. It was really fucking good. That's how they it's call very it. Eos. <laughs> yeah. Calzone. Yeah. It was, it was authentic. It's got an apostrophe. Eos and calzone. Yeah. <laughs> and opens up a heavy steel door. A male fear bog, like late 30s, early 40s. Very tall and thin. Soft maroon fur across his face and body. Thin mohawk of red hair that flops to one side a little bit. Wearing these big multi-lens glasses that have like lenses clasped on the sides and kind of folding in the front. With large front teeth. Sorry, we're not supposed to let people let oh. <laughs> Smiley day to you, sir. Oh my we goodness. Were, oh. We were told that you're an expert in all things automaton. An expert in a lot of things automaton. I don't think all the things, but I'm working on getting better at it. This is definitely an observational classroom slash workshop. He seems excited to see you. I don't right. want to waste your time. This is but, not a waste of my time. This is a rare opportunity. It's an opportunity for me too. Yeah. Oh, you know Joe? Yes, we send letters and give recommendations. He's one of the greatest minds of automaton and uh, arcane locomotion. But I am the Professor here of independent arcane locomotion. I'm also professor of abjuration and enchantment implementation and uh, automaton engineering. I kind of need to know what I've done. If I've done bad things, I kind of want to know that. You'd be uncomfortable poking around, but I will make sure you are comfortable. Whating around? Poking around. Oh, okay. <laughs> 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 so 
Sorry. He's a bit stressed out. Oh, yes. Today. Oh. And bad things happen when he reaches his limits. So just be gentle. I, I may have been created as an assassin thousands of years ago. I've been known to do violent things. Mm. So maybe wear eye protection. I'll disconnect my saw blade yes. and all my other weapon arms. and <laughs> As you're like pulling out all these different, it's like, <laughs> very interesting a series of accompaniment. Ding, ding. <laughs> Pulls open the front of your chest. Here you are a harmonious Aormatan, designed as peacekeepers and diplomatic associates. The event I'm speaking of is called the Care and the Culling. I've the read of this event, in uh, which a number of Aormatans were altered uh, to turn on their companion. Then on only one day, they just turned around and murdered or attempted to murder the person they were given to. If that is what you are, it will be extra special and careful. Let's get in here. And he starts. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's like I can see something them. new. <laughs> so once you hit the center of the earth, if you keep going, it's yeah, 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 more yeah. soil. There's no bottom. <laughs> do you do if you look? Yep, yeah, yeah, I do. Yep. Are you high five? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you are fitted with quite the unique arcane power accumulator. It is far larger than what is needed for a Yormatan of your size, which might very well confirm the fact that you were uh, further created for the care and the calling event. Uh, are you able to access any arcana yourself? Yes, I am, and I don't know how I'm able to. Uh... And you feel this tension release? Ah, Moon oh, River. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. As he pulls out from inside your chest, Heather is. in a wheel. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> this large sphere. It's like a light purple glow of arcane energy. Very much like some of the arcane cores that you've seen used in other automatons. There's an intricacy to the, the mooring and like the metal elements that hold it in place. This might be part of the source of your powers, but I would caution it could be unstable due to age or damage, and most arcane accumulators, when ruptured, can uh, detonate in an extremely destructive degree. This is necessary to your function, but it also, if it was to be overcharged with too much arcane power, oh, oh, I see. Uh, you, would, you, would take out, you would take out most of this building. I'm going to very carefully put this back. Oh, <laughs> okay. It does not appear to be ruptured at all. So this is very good. There is no leaking of power or energy. Does not mean you need to worry about being jostled too much and then kablooey. The incantations that were utilized in the creation of the Elmertons were specific to Eor and they were lost from the city. You are both a relic of history and a very unique, special person. You're a person. That's what they keep saying. <laughs> As much as Aeor gets a lot of negative information written about it, and rightfully so, like there was also a beauty in some of what they made. Yourself very included, so you should not be um, unfair to, to where you came from. That's scary, though. Yeah, being alive is very scary. Yeah. Being conscious, free will, frightening, but also worth everything. If I gotta find my own purpose, that's that's harder. I wish I could offer you the sort of solace, but you're more beautiful than a simple binary answer. He's right. Listen to him. All right. Well, thank you for your time. Could I just make one quick request? I was wondering if you could make some sort of an opening, a safe sort of compartment that could harness and access that heat and bake things. Oh. An easy bake out thing. <laughs> Let's give it a shot. It I think you were going to ask for like... Tell a dildonic yeah, device? Yeah, yeah, that's exactly yeah, that would be, what I thought it would be. on brand. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Oh, it's a term I've never heard. <laughs> I'm not, but now like I tell it no, I get it. for I, those who I, I figured I it know, out. I need to know what it is. I'd... It's a dildo that you control over the internet. Oh, that's great! <laughs> like like with Bluetooth? Yeah, Bluetooth. I, I guess you could do Bluetooth. Okay. I haven't. I've only that's done awesome. the old-fashioned kind. Oh, okay. <laughs> Wi-Fi. Three <laughs> G. <3G>. Yeah. Edge. <laughs> Pro professor. Set an appointment up at the front desk. Next time I have an opening, you can come in and we can talk. But I'm currently busy with work. Hey, this has to do with like some ruinous born shit. So I think you should open the door. 30 second <laughs> pregnant pause before you hear seven locks unlock on the door. Peeking through the left hand side of an older female orc. Cluster of a dozen or so thick braids that are just kind of gathered and tied with a ribbon around the back of her head and the kind of dark brown eyes and the gray green skin bags under her eyes. A standard pre professorial robe over non-formal clothes. Get inside. She, there is a, a window that leads out, but the curtains are drawn on it. Shelves filled with books and papers and writing implements. All right, you have my attention. In her head, she hears 
Have the judicators come looking for you yet? She immediately has this moment of shock and recognition and then steals her face. No, no, they, they have not come through here. Liliana Temel is my mother. What could you tell me about her? She was very helpful in spearheading a research study. She was one of our first major breakthroughs. It really opened the door for a lot of the things that we were theorizing and trying to figure out. There was an, an archive that we were assembling. We called it the Omen Archive. A full, studious breakdown of every major historical figure that we knew of who was Rudis born, as well as a collection of information about numerous modern Rudis born. This archive expanded as we began to notice the exponential increasing number of Rudis born in recent generations. And as that began to grow, it began to move in the studies of recurring similar themes in possibly shared dreams, the astronomical mystery of the Ruidian flare. The exultant, as we called them, were Rudis born with the most fascinating anomalies. Uh, your mother was the first we had encountered. She came to us asking questions, looking for answers, and we were looking for more answers to more questions. It was cracking open a much bigger thing than we all were anticipating to follow. For a long time, Rudis was just assumed to be a superstition, and Rudis born as a phrase used as a a sort of a means of othering. And maybe there is something to that now that we know that there is a connection, or at least with some. There isn't a big history of, of exultants, maybe a handful through history, but the number of recent ones has grown. We, we counted at least 12 in the years that we were studying, and we assume there were more, but we began to have to hide our studies in openness. A lot of questions from people we didn't know, a lot of outside individuals who were prodding about our research, and I don't trust that. Do you know if Odahanthal is an exultant as well? Otahan was our last exultant research subject. They came in on their own accord to acquire. They already knew what we were doing. We did a few of our tests. We began to look for the limitations of their abilities. At a certain point, it just began to get more uncomfortable, and we stopped. They seemed unhappy with the limitations of what we were allowing to impart upon her, and uh, well, that was when we began to hide our movements. She couldn't make a scene here in the middle of the seminary, but some of our members who were off-site and not under such protection protections began to disappear. We scattered. I was questioned a couple of times, but said that I absolved myself of any of this and have been working hard to maintain an air of a on retirement path professor here. So the exultant, they were the first to exhibit these special abilities. They were also the first to speak of the uh, Rai Laura. Some of the exultants, near exultant through this born, at least those very strong dreams who were older and maybe had been finding ways to connect more often. These dreams, they involved walking on dust storms and what felt like it was on Rudis' surface. They were meeting other Rudis is born within this landscape, within shared dreams. Yes. Some of them began meeting a collection of entities, crimson beings that refer to themselves as the Rylora. They were first believed to be like dream state beings outside of our standard cosmology. They spoke without words, presenting riddles and asking for alliance or subversion. It's been long theorized that the flares were a way for these Rylora to connect themselves with Exandrians. At this point of birth, they would really mark them upon them entering these planes and and then holding that tether, and then the dreams would start coming. So your mother was one of the very connected who could interpret and communicate these communications with the Rai Laura. How long she'd been having the dreams before the Rai Laura appeared to her? She came to us about 10 years ago, but she had been long wandering before that, yeah. trying to find answers. When she came to us, she had been all over Marquette. She had been beyond that, and eventually came to us when they, she was sent to our research, which she had, we had been only been doing a short time. These Rai Laura, their intelligence was hard to understand, and we have no concept of their morality, and that's where we began to pull back from pushing towards these communications. Our studies became more about finding proof beyond these dreams in hope of saving lives, seeing if there is some good to come from this or ending it. My mother, I think, had the ability to push herself into other people's dreams. Yeah, she was beginning to develop that when we told her to hold back because of the Rylora. And it was incredible, the progress, but it became too worrying. It's only so far you can push into the unknown before the unknown begins pushing back. Are these Rylora friendly? Some seem to be. Some were solid flesh in dreams, others were made up of some sort of energy. They were intelligent, alien, kind of a crimson hue that was similar to the landscape that these dreams took place in. Some enticed with promise, others intimidated or demanded. Others still brought empathy and comfort. It was a spectrum, which made it confusing. And at times, based on the interactions, we would continue to try and engage, but not always the same entities would respond. Sometimes the kind ones would not come back, and the aggressive ones would continue to take over. And they speak wordlessly with imagery and emotions. I do get the dreams as well. Any tips you could give me to help me push back? She goes into one of the shelves and starts like going through books, books, books. Pulls one down, opens the book. The book is hollow. Takes a key out of the book. 
puts it back on the shelf, goes to where her desk is, and pushes the desk forward about a foot. There's a small six inch by six inch door underneath where the desk was. She unlocks it, opens it up, looks at the door, looks at the window, looks at you. It's a telltale. It's going so well. It's going so well. Suddenly, <laughs> the stress becomes too much at CG. <laughs> Pulls up thick leather wrap, something, sets it on the desk, opens it up, and there is a stack of pages. The archive was taken not long ago. We knew it was in danger of, of being stolen by some of these individuals that have maligned interests in our research, so I removed the number of pages from all the text that I had left behind. All right, so here are some notes from the last sleep session we did with Liliana. All the locks in the door. Shh. I'm gonna stand. And move some pages. Get to the door. The door. Just cover the door. Open. And standing there in the doorway, an older-looking elven man. No. With long white silver hair. No. Long blue, gold silver robes. Hello. Jewelry. Oh, hello. Hi. I'm here to speak with the professor, if you don't mind. Can you just wait like five minutes? <laughs> no. And that's where we're gonna take a break. Oh! <laughs> 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 Maybe it's just a pizza delivery guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Maybe it's I'm somewhere sure around it's pizza. Pizza. <laughs> I'm sorry, we're at 28 minutes, and if I wait any more, <laughs> it will be free. <laughs> no. No, what? I'm so sorry. I, you just walked in here rudely. Step aside. He begins to step in your direction. Whoa, 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 whoa. We're having a girl's tea. Like Make a wisdom saving throw. I have advantage on magical effects and spells and things like you that. You do. in your head. <laughs> Da la da la. Okay. <laughs> la, 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 la. 26. Whoa. 26. Whoa. He just kind of gives you a look and runs his fingers to try and pierce your mind. Your fey ancestry manages to shrug off the effect. I'll wave back. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. We are not the ones you're looking for. <laughs> he smiles and kind of chuckles. Amusing. What's your name? Don't walk in here without telling me your name. <laughs> I'm Martin Ed Ludinus de Leth of the Cerberus Assembly of the Dwendalian Empire in Wyoming. One more time, because that's so long. I don't have time for this. He begins to walk past you, just like entering the chamber behind you. You have ignored assembly requests for meeting for weeks now, and we are working on a short time team. Okay, a I'm personal out. visit seemed the most productive measure. The door slams behind them without him oh. touching it, and it locks. This guy's bad forward. news. This is a bad guy. I believe you know why I'm here. I now know who you are and with whom you ally. I feel like we're intruding on something. Yeah, this is this feels very personal. Move Moves his fingers like this in two chairs in the chamber, shift it behind you and kind of kick you down into a sitting position. The archive recovered is extremely important to our research, but necessary excerpts have been missing. I would request at the behest of the Rendalian Empire and the other members of the Separatist Assembly that you turn over the remainder of the archive of your own volition. You now notice that as the door began to open, she had already shifted the papers off the desk, but the desk hasn't been moved back, and there's just an opening in the ground where they're just kind of resting. We gave over everything. It was delivered. It should have all been there already. I'm just a professor. I, I, I'm a teacher. We're just teachers. We're just teachers. Kind of shoots a glance of his eye to you, back to her. We know you're not just a teacher. He brings his hand up and traces one half circle in the air, threads his fingers through it, flick in her direction. As it does, you see this little green tether that drifts in an arch towards her head. It touches her forehead and it turns into smoke. And she immediately goes, of course. Oh. Reaches down, grabs wow. it, stands up and hands wow. it over to him. That wasn't so hard, was it? Puts it into his robes. I do hate robbing them of their will, but some things are more important. He turns over to the two of you. She was right. You do look just like your mother. <gasps> I've heard of your prowess. A pleasure. And you. And me. Not quite an accident, but definitely of the Red Moon. Oh, two it is. We should probably be heading out. <coughs> oh, oh my god! god. Why? <laughs> Nice shot. Okay. There are all manner of intricate rings on his finger. His clothing is intimidating in how well crafted and designed it is. There's an air of confidence that is genuinely terrifying through his smile. Though he seems almost pleasant. It's that odd charismatic pressure that you can't help but be put off by. Where are you from? The continent of Wildmount. It's cool. <laughs> <laughs> what is your business with the professor? I was just trying to find my mother, and I knew that she had spoken with this professor in the past, just hoping to find out anything about her. Do you work with her personally? For some time, yes. She's been rather integral to what we're doing, and I think I would be eternally grateful for what she's done. We all will be. You should be proud. I am. 
Thank you. Do you feel the pull northward? I mean, now that he says this, you remember there's always been this kind of moment in the morning when you wake up. You always find yourself subconsciously glancing in a direction. You remember the dream that you had where you looked at the moon and felt it draw you towards it. And until now, you hadn't really connected the two. Follow the instinct. Both of you, if it's there. I know you've had dalliances with the ignorant masses that try and tangle our hard work. I know you've confronted my associate, Thul. And I'm not blind enough to believe that you are just seeking entry into our merry band. But I also know you only speak from a place of ignorance, misunderstanding. I'm not the one doing this. There are many of us working together to make this happen. This is important work. It's my life's work. So. Do you want to know how to help? Stop resisting. Are you rude as born as well? I have my connections to the Red Moon, yes. Inside check. Do you have bomb ass inside? Yeah, he's getting down! A whisper! Oh, whisper! Yes. A whisper! It's time for a whisper! Combat thing. This isn't combat, this is a whisper. Combat of the mind. Combat of the mind. This combat of the mind is brought to you by WizKids Mind Minis? <laughs> 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 Slash CR Minis, or your local game store. Yeah. Of the mind. <laughs> <laughs> Does it speak to you directly? I've had my conversations, yes. You get that feeling that's like really deep inside your chest where you feel like a really intense anger and you know where it's coming from? He genuinely looks like he kind of lost the thread. <laughs> <laughs> that's him, I just speak. Is that just you? <laughs> <laughs> I think her mother would love to see you. What'd she say? Sad that her destiny took her on a different path and she hoped it wouldn't lead you to the dangerous Threads of fate that tug her ever away. Seems you share a very similar destiny. She's been beckoning me to her for quite a while, and I've been resisting. Maybe it's time to give in. Do you know what we're doing? Learning bits and pieces. If you succeed, though, will it go away? Parts of it will. We've never needed them. They've always needed us. It's happening soon, right? Sooner than I'd like. We'll be as ready as we can be. What are you doing with those papers? Don't want to spoil the surprise. I don't really like surprises, so maybe you should just tell me. I watched the world burn at their behest. I saw the ruin their games left of our people. The destruction they brought down to stunt the potential of mortal minds and hearts. They act only to preserve themselves. If there is even an ounce of you that finds faith in them, there is no place for you amongst us. How old are you? Old enough. You don't have any faith either, are you? Why don't I have faith in the gods? They don't mean anything to me. We are the seeds they plant and till and water. We struggle in the maze they shaped. Then when we expire, we return to their private gardens to be harvested and feed their power and dominance. Because they told us there is no alternative. This is how it is and we must thank them for it. We may be their creations, but all children outgrow their parents. And they came to fear our development. Our potential, the matron, the age of our canon, the growing will of the mortal mind, the divergence. It wasn't to protect us, it was to protect them from us. And he steps out of the room and the door closes. What is the professor doing through all this? She's just sitting there with a smile on her face and a tear rolling down her cheek. Professor Sumal, there's gotta be something we can do. I don't know what snaps somebody out of this. He might have just destroyed her brain. We'll send somebody for you. She now looks over and kind of smiles and nods. How old? He spoke like he saw it. I know. That's what I heard. Like he was actually there. We've got to stop him. I've got to find my mother. So I come to you in this pantry. I'm tied to a chair, and violence, so violence uh, just behind me, and that sociopathic elf just will not shut the fuck up. This some asshole is just yelling at me that my face keeps leaving a dent in their industrial garlic press. They're trying to figure out why. Man, I think independent contract work was really unhealthy, and I'm really glad I'm not doing that sort of shit anymore. I'm surprised you let them tie you to the chair. That seems very giving on your part. Well, I was unconscious at that point because of that fucking accountant that came through. Happened to have just a sleep spell. We got, at least that's what I think happened. Violet would not show. It wasn't the Kenku, it was a different Kenku, but wow. clearly they were related. Not this time, Morum, you see descending. Long, white, mm -hmm. silver hair, blue, gold robes, older elvish gentleman. Descends to the bottom of the stairs and continues walking out into the main cobblestone thoroughfare. What about the cookware? They actually made a point of telling me how much, how expensive it in was. The ribs it's like really 950 hard. gold. Ah. Like, oh, Hold that thought, I do want to hear the end of this saga. <laughs> there. 
memorize that fucking guy's head. We gotta oh. get inside. They might not be okay. All right, looking at this. Oh, wow, this is so cool. Oh, my God. It's got a little compartment to make sure that when you eat the things, it stays in there and doesn't like end up falling all over the place and onto the ground. So that way you have both the intake of that and the intake of this both work simultaneously. Thank you so much, Professor. I'm gonna try to cook something in here and I'll send it to you as a gift of a thank you. It has been a complete honor. I have never really had the opportunity to do give direct adjustments to an automaton. I cannot wait to put together a lecture about this experience. Such a pleasure. Oh, the pleasure you're is so entirely mine. Oh, you're so wonderful. Oh, really? Be safe. Enjoy your journeys. Hope you continue to pursue your intellectual path in life. Two sure. other figures in familiar dark red and silver robes meet up with him across the way, vanish from the middle of the road. Other people nearby are like, whoa, a group of people who are like, what the? Oh. Never get used to it. Blown away by the sort of oh, magic ooh. for a brief moment, and then go about their conversations for the day. Ah, uh, Carol, hey. we're back. Is this a good time? It's never a good time. I was duped by you. I mean, I don't want to make a big stink about it. Well, of course not. We're just here to deliver a gift to uh, Professor Sumal. We're only going to be a little while. Joe, I can't allow that to happen after what happened. Carol, I'm supposed to be the nice guy in our group. I really don't want to cause a row here. With the nicest intimidation. <laughs> I'm very, very slowly going to pull out a large silver-handled wooden pot spoon. <laughs> <laughs> they're shoved in the back. There's about, it's clearly just seen a little bit of fucking use today. Mm -hmm. And there's some cracks, there might be some blood on it, maybe marinara, who knows. We're in a real rush. So if you don't mind, please, pretty fucking please, just let us in. I'm starting to carve her likeness into my left tit. <laughs> <laughs> I slap your tit real quick. <laughs> I mean, we're just here to learn. We really don't want to cause any problems. She looks at the spoon. This has already been somewhere today. I can tell. I have to go That's check yes. in. Thank you. Yes. Going. Yeah. <laughs> just knock stuff off the. No, I, I... <laughs> Buy something nice with that five platinum. I'll finish this later. You have to hold still. <laughs> What are you doing? Where for an imagen? We were just going to go meet them in the They're in the other office. Did you hear saw, something? No, we just saw Dalith heading out of the seminary. We gotta get everyone else. He's throughout the door. Ten feet to the left, you see the rest of your friends, like right okay. there. Oh, hey. Guys, what happened? What? What happened? What? 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 But he definitely knew about us. I oh, knew about you, but he knew that you would be here now. Was he looking for you, you think? No, he was looking for her. She's, She's always been here. This is her office. She, he could have come anytime. Why did he come now? Maybe to meet Imogen. Do you have an ability to help her out? How bad is it? Hi. Hi. What's your name, by the way? I'm Khadija. Khadija? Yeah. How old are you? It's okay if you don't know. It's been a rough day, trust me. Head hurts. Oh, yeah. What you been thinking about? I had pages. Yeah, you did. That's right. <sighs> Do you need anything? Do you want anything? We right could here. have some water. She's in a school with some of the most brilliant yeah. professors yeah, and yeah, magic yeah, users. Don't... They can help her. They won't know what happened, though. But they will know what to do. Do you know who Kai is? Yeah. Would you like to go see Kai? Would that make you happy? Okay. 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 I agree with Chetney. We've got to get the fuck out of here, so. Let's <laughs> go. Did you say did that? Did I say that? You did. <laughs> With your posture. Yes, I can tell. Um, <laughs> no, I'm rubbing up. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna send a message to Plain Rider Rin. We're in Sumal's office. We need a fast exit. She's been hurt. Well, shit. I was really hoping that he was elsewhere. <sighs> On my way. I'm gonna start looking through the books and see if there's anything. Did you roll? I rolled. Very eight. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of books. The form of Plain Rider Rin just kind of apparates. All right, that's certainly curious. Um, oh, my dear. You can do mind things, right? Can you fix her? This is going to be more of a, a divine healer. I think I may have somebody can bring two for this. I'm a divine healer, I think. Can you restore the most powerful of curses? No. <laughs> <laughs> Do not worry. I'll ensure the professor gets the help that she needs. Uh, check in with Pate. Look through his eyes. Sitting kind of on the shoulder of this guy who's kind of sitting there and just poking him <laughs> in the face <laughs> over and over again. I love you just his eyes as he's doing that. <laughs> you just see his hand go, <laughs> and the guy's just like, yes. ow, ow. 
Ow. <laughs> Good boy. He showed up and got the rest of the archive. That moves our timeline a bit. Some of the things that we were trying to use to slow them down and keep it from them have fallen to the cracks. The remaining pieces that were part of those papers, they included the names of all the known living exaltants within Exambria. It also detailed the rotations of Ruidus and the pattern of its orientation during each flare through recorded history. Oh. Dalith is one of the most powerful people on the surface of this flat earth. <laughs> <laughs> you dick. He gets Do it. Orm gets it. No. <laughs> He's got some good points. No. <laughs> wow. 19 to hit. Not kidding. <laughs> <laughs> you take a hammer to the face. No, just miss. Just miss. Just miss. 19 to hit. I don't, uh, sure, that hits. Yeah. <laughs> Knock it off. Oh. Okay. Guys, can I remind you to just please try to be friendly oh, with each other? It's okay. It's okay. This is how it's I show okay. affection. You know that. It's okay. Oh, everyone's broken. We gotta go. <laughs> Let's go recruit a fucking grandma. Pete. Yeah. One last, like, double doozy to the eyes. Oh, Good boy. He just explodes into syrup oh, on the shoulder of the guy. Somewhere in a, in a warehouse, the guy's going. <laughs> <laughs> as he like reappears in the air next to you. Back at your side, like you say. <laughs> Whoa, it was very clear. That's all I heard. Oh my god. Man, <laughs> Where are you off to? We are going to the Harrow Call Fens, Grandma's house. It's known as Ligament Manor. Oh Ligament Manor? No, I don't know. Fucking I really slow was rolling excited. piece of shit. Ligament, Ligament Manor. Manor. Sounds cozy. So I'm, I'm into this now. So chewy. So nice. <laughs> I'll do my best. To the Fey Realm. Now tell me how it is when you return. I'm genuinely curious. Do you and... want me to get this one? Yeah, if you don't mind. Okay. Alakazam. <laughs> I'm very unkind. Like, Malachi Z. This is going to go poorly. Am okay. I stealing your thunder? No, please. Go go ahead. He is such an asshole. Right. Yeah. <laughs> kind of like it. Seeing your moment. Huh? <laughs> she reaches up to the elbow in her pouch, which is only about that deep, pulls out a small case. A calf <laughs> <laughs> And she casts you to the hells. <laughs> Alexandria. Oh, End of campaign. <laughs> Long wooden case. These series of unique looking metallic rods, each about between four to six inches long. And they're made of different materials, the different shapes. Some of them look twisted. Some of them look like they're made of a bright golden bronze metal. There's one that you see that has almost like a glowing red hue to it. Pieces of metal that hold it themselves look like they're made of different materials as well. There's one that looks like a jet black vein of red going through it. What is um, that? You don't want to know. Grab this one that looks like a gnarled root, about that long. Two flowers, like spontaneously bloom on it. Yeah. Takes one, plucks it, mm. puts it in your hair. Oh. Cuddle up! It's gonna be a ride. Guys, this is gonna be <laughs> I mean, so I fun. I hope I don't kill you. Which means the trace. What? <laughs> up in the air around her, begins to carve this circle in the air, and as she does, you watch as the air kind of divides and splits, almost like she's like she's a knife through silk. The silk begins to fall forward, oh. this tunnel of energy opening to the constantly swirling, endless tunnel. We get in and pushes you all into it. Yeah. Yeah. You all immediately yeah. being pulled through, kind of free falling, grabbing onto each other before you all land out the opposite side into this kind of soft, spongy ground, dark, Lit. You're not entirely certain for a few moments what's up, what's down. Are we here? Welcome. You now see yourself in a creepy, magical marshland of stacking gnarled trees that twist in odd directions to form a large web like ceiling of corkscrew branches and trunks in all directions for hundreds of feet. You don't even see a canopy of leaves, it's just a lattice work of trees that twist around each other and bend, leaving just little gaps and just a hint of this kind of pinkish purple skylight that occasionally peeks through. Mm. Fern, is this your vibe? It is absolutely my vibe. Okay. And welcome to my home. <laughs> <laughs> you hear the ever-present sound of deep calling toads. Mysterious gibbering fauna. With Hunter's Bane. Everywhere. The I've seen infinity moment for, for a blood hunter who's only encountered a handful of fae in their time. Okay. As you approach, they kind of open across the tree. And some of them almost seem to be leaning in your direction. This way, right? Thank you. It's been a while. 
Love you, bye. <laughs> they all kind of nod towards you. Is Fern a little bit weirder right now? <laughs> when you look at Fern, she's Fern, but there's something different about her. Her features are sharper. Her eyes are bigger and deeper. Ears seem to almost be longer. Her limbs seem to be just slightly exaggerated. There's this like. otherworldly air about her that's just unique. <laughs> Did we change animators? <laughs> 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 Sorry, it's real. real. Sorry, I'm envisioning. Uh, I'm envisioning really dark, dilated goat eyes. Oh yes. Right now. <laughs> Love y'all. Yeah. It's upsetting at a first glance. I think I look a little different when I leave here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just a little. Yeah. A little bit. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. A little creepy, and I'm kind of here for it. So. Really? Yeah. It's working. Yeah. Thanks. How's your wheel doing in the bog? It's okay, it's all terrain. I think your tongue might have gotten longer. Only when I lie. <laughs> <laughs> Solid. Can I look for tracks of any unnatural size or nature that might be alarming? It looks like, like a tree was ripped out of the ground and the moss just kind of grew over it. And then another, and then another. And then another. But it's not like an imprint, tree? it's a removal. Something rooted, tearing itself free uh, repeatedly. Yeah. We're all safe. Of course, why would you not be? Uh, uh, I know this place is intense, but you're going to be fine. Something massive in the trees <laughs> above just takes off and. We found me here. <laughs> <laughs> it knows where I am. Right. It's okay, FCG. It's all right. All right, let's go. Just say hello, or just sing a tune, or. Oh God, that's being a creepy flower. <laughs> <laughs> I'm literally just me listening to you, but sure. <laughs> <laughs> you look creepy. Good. You're being so creepy. Like, I'm looking at my wife. Oh no! <laughs> oh, man, you're such a creepy flower. <laughs> uh, I have some things to evaluate Thanks. tonight. <laughs> <laughs> they respond to voice. Oh, cool. Toodaloo! <laughs> Hold my hand, I'm scared. <laughs> I know it's a lot. I love it, Lana, you get scared of flowers. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just try and do a little, you know, a run by, little um, reaching out of the hands as much as I can. High fives. You know, high fives, yeah, like I'm running <laughs> through a stadium. <laughs> yes, exactly. The flowers are like. <laughs> <laughs> you're just smashing a bunch of flowers in the tree trunks, and they're all like, they're all withdrawing. So you play well in general, but there's something about being back home that brings this comfort. The clarity of the pipes of the flute begins to slide around, jazz-like. <laughs> there it is. That's, uh, That's where we're at. You continue to sing along with it. You scatting? Scatting. Oh sure, by all means. Jazz hands. Jazz hands. Jazz hands. Jazz hands. Jazz hands. Everybody. The heavy tree root rise and please, please, please. <laughs> Trying to kind of keep in time of this weird, fluid jazz beat that you're crafting. You can't. But it's trying. Hundreds and hundreds of flowers at once. Just screech and then vanish into the tree. Oh, the whole party screamed like that for sure. Flowers. Right this way, right this way. Yes, no, yes, they loved it. Yeah, flowers can't clap. No. Jazz is chaos. Jazz yeah. is chaos. So such chaos. But you also pick up a familiar scent. Burning oils. Oils that are squeezed from some of the swamp roots. The lanterns that your Nana uses. Hey, Chetney. Huh? Did you smell that? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Let's go. Following Fern as she toucan sams her way through <laughs> <laughs> the pathway of this See the occasional tangled loop morass. There's like an actual <laughs> string of smell. Yeah. <laughs> uh, feet lifting off the ground. Yeah. 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 <laughs> oh, pick the basket. The rest of you. <laughs> you can't see yeah, 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 I got a couple rails there, but I, I see where you landed. Just, just follow my nose. It always knows. <laughs> An 
enormous tree-like structure and shroud it in an endless tangle of teal moss-covered vines that seem to protrude and then dangle hundreds of feet down the outside of it to the point where you cannot see the tree itself. It looks like frozen waterfall of streamers of deep green and teal. Faintly glowing flowers of red and purple as well that kind of occasionally peek through. This tree rises a hundred feet or more up, and the shape of the tree implies a dozen or more massive thick branches that curve and rise out of its sides. The blanket of vines dangling over that to almost be like drapes that kind of bound and then fall and fall and then stop as they kind of dangle like a weeping willow at all sides of it. You cannot see the true details, but you do pick up within this endless cluster of vines, hundreds of small nests, empty wooden cages, lanterns that still flicker, a small flame within, and many, many unique wreaths that have all been tied throughout, subtly decorating it on all sides. The air here hangs with a heavy weight, a presence that leaves your breath thick and chill. Welcome home, friends. A large section of the vines pull apart like curtains or drapes. The shattered interior, just the faintest bit of warm, flickering firelight sourced somewhere within the canopy. This is probably the <laughs> largest tree you've seen aside from the sun tree. It's comparable in its thickness. Wow. 30 feet up, it splits into two separate trunks that then wrap around each other in a corkscrew upward. And along the corkscrew, multiple branches that settle off as you look up. And each one of these little branches seems to caress like a hand. Little hut, wooden bridges that connect, little wooden staircases that wind up. Finley Robinson would blush and be jealous of this abode. Hint. We knew you were coming. Flat expanse at the base of where the split is. It's decorated in knitted dolls placed on little naturally warped tables. Animal skeletons that have been posed in dancing positions with each other that are placed up on little shelves and along the sides of the entryway. You can see alien looking potted plants that seem to be taking root on their side of the room and guarding it fiercely. Oh, <gasps> How we have missed you. I've missed you so bad! I run over and I just leap into her arms. The shoulders of this sit at about seven, eight feet. The shoulders are wide. Torso, massive seven-foot barrel. It's swathed in a large, patterned, blue-green, robe-like dress that's comprised of patches and rope and wayward branches and hanging trinkets wound together to create this unique texture around this body. You cannot see feet from beneath the robes, but can hear them hit the ground like a dropped sack of full flower with each step ahead on a stretching, craning neck. Craning like a giraffe. What the fuck? <laughs> wreathed in long, tangled white hair, like a horse's mane that travels down the whole length of it as it extends about two and a half, three feet from the shoulders. At the end of it, a wrinkled old woman's face, the pair of noseless nostril holes, a terrifying wide smile of jagged teeth. Her dark eyeless sockets each hold a sunken golden glow. The proportions colloquially are very similar to E.T., to be honest. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, that got weird. Fern with your friends yes. like a cocktail. Oh <laughs> my god, yes. Yes, Please. yes. Let's get some cocktails. Let's put some music on. I'm sorry we came in unannounced, but guys, this is my Nana Mori. <laughs> Wonderful so to meet you. Pleasure to meet you, ma'am. Welcome, welcome. We have guests. You hear a voice say, Welcome, swell. Pulls open the front of the dress, and you see the barrel torso, a massive pair of sunken eyes, and a second mouth that stretches <laughs> across the entirety of the belly that curls into a smile. <laughs> kind of pats it with the larger arms. We haven't had guests in a while. We're excited. Come, let me show you to my tiki bar. <laughs> <laughs> and that's where ends tonight's episode. Oh, <laughs> oh, the hell? She's so cool! Best grandma ever. I, know, I, know. I, know. I was hoping you'd make more sense, and now I'm even a little more oh confused. Nice. Welcome home, yes. Holy shit. Isn't that so beautiful? Yes. That's amazing. Oh, amazing. I have yeah. so many more pasta themed terrible stories to yeah. tell. Just <laughs> such a collection. Thank you for joining us. We love you very much, and visit Thursday. Yay! Yay. Yay.